Some call it mkokoteni, others call it the hand cut, whatever the name might be. Perhaps you and I have seen it before and nothing really struck us. But on our show today, on this episode, we get to meet someone who saw it and saw an opportunity to help those informal workers that normally use it to address issues of waste management in one way or the other, to make it easier for them to achieve that objective. My name is Sela Bogonko, co-founder and CEO, Jacob's Ladder Africa, and this is Green Jobs Africa. So hi, Kenneth, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Excellent. So first of all, thank you so much for making the time to hang out with us today. It's, um, it's a very inspiring story that I watched of your journey of how you were able to see the hand cut and, you know, what you've done with it and then the inspiration that came out of it. And I think you're probably one of the first people who began to work on uh, immobility in the country when it was not a thing. And that's part of what we want to talk about. Um, because on this set, well, the previous episodes take the form of understanding your work environment and how it, the idea or innovation works. On this set, we get to learn about you as an entrepreneur or you as an innovator. What inspired you? What triggered that innovation? Where did you start from? Is this your first job? So perhaps you could take us a little bit back before we got we get into the specific innovation. Tell us a bit about that transition from where you were and what triggered this idea in your mind. Okay, thank you very much uh, for welcoming me here. Uh, it is a pleasure to be here. Uh, my name is Kenneth Guantai. Uh, of course, I started uh, my journey from far, that is in the year 2015. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but before then, after graduating from the university, and just like any other graduate, I went out there to look for a job. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was lucky to find uh, my first job in a bank mm -hmm. because uh, my background is actually economics and finance. Mm -hmm. And then I worked for like uh, two years mm -hmm. and I was blending between work and in doing some business because I had started a business when I was a second year in the university. What I was kind of at business? Kenyatta University. So oh, I was also in Kenyatta University, so <laughs> that's a good thing. Yes. So what kind of business were you doing? I was doing uh, medical supplies. Despite the fact in that university? I'm not uh, yes. Okay. When I was at the, the university I visited the pharmacy and the poison board and asked them. Uh, I know uh, selling of drugs is a business like any other. Mm -hmm. Only I need to start a pharmacy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, they told me once you register it, you get someone to register the pharmacy. Mm -hmm. Then whoever has to sell it also must be a pharmacist. Mm -hmm. Mine is to monitor yeah. what is happening mm -hmm. and maybe finance it and all that. Mm -hmm. So that is what I did when I was in second year. Mm -hmm. And now the money that I was getting from Arab and all that, Whereas my colleagues were celebrating, they think every so, time sorry, I sneak because out. Because we have a, an Africa-wide, uh, what is it called, audience. Yes. So HELP is the Higher Education Loan. Yeah, loan Board. Yeah. So we were given some money. It's a loan. That time. And that money was a lot that time. And the fees that we are paying and also the parents are chipping in mm. was so much. Yeah. So, and I was in... Uh, and drunk and I mm. could not go to others. So I decided to start a business mm. because I knew you may even get out of the university after graduating and, and you may not get a job immediately. Yeah. So I needed something to transition myself mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. when I graduate before I get a job. So I started and employed some young people from Kenya Medical Training Center, mm -hmm. they just started their business and they started it. Wow. It went growing, I started even importing grass and then distributing to other pharmacies in Europe. Mm -hmm. and that is in the year 2006, 2007. Yeah. So when I graduated in the year 2008, uh, I find myself working briefly in a bank, mm -hmm. uh, as a sales uh, lab in a bank. Mm -hmm. And after two years, uh, when I was going to town, of course, to collect my medicine and distribute to other pharmacies, there was a strike by the Mkokoteni guys, so mm -hmm. I could not get someone to to carry those uh, carton of the drugs carton for me, mm -hmm. but they, they end all in the strike. Mm -hmm. So I asked myself... And these are the hand cuts, right? The hand cut one yeah. and the trolleys, all yeah. of them, the trolleys mm -hmm. and the hand cut and, and the strike. Because the former governor, Evan, Dr. Evan Kindero at that time, mm -hmm. wanted to face them from town mm -hmm. because of 
how they were creating tra traffic jam. Yeah. The way they are moving through. Yeah. So they are creating traffic jam, especially mm -hmm. if you look at the road like the Aida oh, near the, the road, yeah. near the Mudurwa. Mm -hmm. In the morning, mm -hmm. they create a lot of traffic jam. Mm -hmm. So they want them to face them out. Mm -hmm. So that one disturbed me a lot, and I asked myself, why can't they make it motorized? Yeah. to compete with the vehicle so that this vehicle can people can move faster mm -hmm. because in my view there were many youth mm -hmm. who are unemployed and they are using that to earn a living yeah. because i've seen them in Nairobi and yeah. every other town mm -hmm. so facing out was not a solution mm -hmm. the solution was to improve on the mkokoten you yeah. know so when i went back to the farmers i started writing notes how can we motorize a mkokoten was my topic so I started writing you notes, know, much as I'm not an engineer, yeah. I came here at the University of Nairobi Engineering Institute. I asked the professor there, how can I motorize them? Mm -hmm. Some of them, of course, uh, after realizing I'm not even an engineer and despise me, mm. but I would not give up. And after doing my analysis and no one was offering a solution locally, I started now going online. So, be and before, so before you actually go on, you've yes. said so many things that I think are very important to yeah. buttress. Yeah. One of them was that it's the problem that yeah. you saw yeah. that became the thing that triggered the opportunity it is for the you. one that triggered my my idea your curiosity and even the idea yeah. but at that point the leadership let's say or people was looking at it as a nuisance yeah. and wanted to phase it out yeah. but then you were seeing it as instead of phasing it out let's improve, improve on it. it because especially at the informal settling informal sector yeah. many of the transition cannot be the issue is not always to phase them out or to yeah. remove them. Yeah. The issue is actually to find a way of improving how yeah. they can earn yeah. a better living yeah. at that level. And make it more modernized. Precisely. Uh, yeah. So I just wanted to reinforce on that because I think it's absolutely Yeah, brilliant. so that what drove my idea. Mm -hmm. I want them to offer a solution. Yeah. But now offering that a solution is also a journey because remember one thing, I'm not an engineer. Mm -hmm. I don't know even where to start. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much it will cost to motorize them, but I had a vision mm. that if it can be done, mm. it can solve that problem. Yeah. So finally, I was able to to do research outside, mm -hmm. and I got some Chinese company which mm -hmm. told me we can actually design an EV kit for you. Mm -hmm. Then you design any model of handicap mm -hmm. or trolley that you want. Mm -hmm. But the drive system so and everything. How did you find them? How did you find the Chinese company? I Google on, of course, I Google. Google on is phone. your friend. <laughs> and find who can manufacture, how can I, I, I started by asking how can I motorize just uh, online? Yeah, online. That's fantastic. Through a phone. Uh -huh. Then I go to several companies and I choose one. Uh -huh. Then I research with that one. Uh -huh. So finally they told me they have a, a, a professor from Texas University who actually intended it as a, a thesis for his uh, PhD. Uh -huh. He researched on how to motorize a uh -huh. and how to develop a wheelchair, an electric wheelchair. Uh -huh. But for him, he intended it as a concept as paper. A he never actualized into yeah. an MVP, a minimum yeah. viable product. Uh -huh. So I reach out, they send me the contacts, I reach out to that professor, he sent me the, oh, this is the way it is. Wow. The booklet. The yeah. way it is. So I went through it, and finally I told the Chinese, now this is what I want. They told me, when you are in there, this is the quotation, send the money. Uh -huh. We developed the EV kit. The EV kit is actually the axle. Mm -hmm the controller system and the drotos mm -hmm. because I want them someone to drive. Yeah. Then there is the Amion battery that mm -hmm. will power the, the axle. Mm -hmm. So, but now I didn't want to use the little money I have mm -hmm. uh, to do that. Mm -hmm. So I went and told my manager at the bank, I want to resign from bank. Mm -hmm. So he asked me, what do you want to do? I told him I want to be an innovator. What are you inno innovating? I'm Coco Ten. <laughs> you are crazy. <laughs> Go to my dad and bring me a psychiatric letter. Before Get a I report. Yeah. So finally I was able to resign. Mm -hmm. And uh, I now went full into my other business to sustain me. So you're saying you went, for, I was just about to ask you that. So you are now handling your pharmacy, yeah. right? As your side gig. Yeah. So you left your corporate job yeah. and then you now figured out you wanted uh, to focus on the Now I want to do this innovation. Mm -hmm. So I wrote the whole now concept, even borrowed some concept from the professor, they mm -hmm. called the this is paper. Then uh, I didn't have money to buy this component from Chinese because mm -hmm. it was almost coming to 500,000 somewhere mm -hmm. there to buy the EV kit, to mm -hmm. import them through air, 
because you can I didn't want to ship them mm. through the, the the water. So after like uh, four months, mm -hmm. when I was going to work in Amatatu, I saw someone perusing a newspaper, mm -hmm. and one page was written: "If you have an idea that can transform Africa, apply." So it was from the founder of UMBM Bank, mm -hmm. Mr. Tony Rimeru, mm -hmm. he's a Nigerian, and he wanted to support innovations in mm -hmm. the 54 countries. So mm -hmm. if you have any idea mm -hmm. or a, a viable product, mm -hmm. you and apply. And that was just in a newspaper next to someone who was in Amatato? Yeah, I saw it in Amatato because someone was sitting there. So when I got to where I was going, I bought that paper that mm -hmm. day and went through it. And because I had my com com concept paper, mm -hmm. soft and uh, physical. Mm. I just went, it was online. You do it online, you apply what you have, the idea, how you make money, how mm. you transform Africa. Mm -hmm. So I, I now and did it as this? our own business on how to revolutionize them. When was this? 2015. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I applied just like and submitted just like anybody else. Mm. So like a month, he told us we have applied 70,000 of us from Africa. Mm -hmm. Now I realize, yeah, the chances of winning are very slim. But finally, I was among the winners. Wow. And how many uh, winners were there? Uh, there are 200. Mm -hmm. So we are supposed to be taken to Lagos. Mm -hmm. uh, you've been given uh, training for two weeks. Then after you come back, you are given one million grand mm -hmm. to do to boost what you want to mm -hmm. do. So after traveling there, I came back. Uh, now I went to Kenya Vehicle Manufacturing Industry because I didn't want to do it in the Kariobangi way in our mm. workshop. Mm. I wanted to showcase something modern. Yeah. So I went to Vika, uh, the, manuf the vehicle manufacturing plant. I told them I want to manufacture Amkokoten. Mm -hmm. The MD there told me we had already tried this before mm. and we are unable to do it. You go and do it. Then you bring the, that minimum viable product. We do mass production yeah. for you. For me, that speaks of even those that had tried it before. Because you know, sometimes you think that your idea is new. Yeah. And sometimes it may not necessarily even be new. Yeah. Like you met different people who are telling you this thing won't work. Yeah. Or we've tried this before. Yeah. It's exactly the same thing that actually happened with um, e-vehicles e as well. Yeah, yeah. The person in, China, in, in Israel who tried to do it, yeah. and he was constantly being told, even by the big organizations yeah. like the Mercedes and the yeah. you know, Nissan, that we've already tried this thing before. Yeah. It won't work. Yeah. So it's great to know, and that's a lesson, especially for young people, yeah. that Every no is yeah. a pushback from someone who tried it and yeah. didn't have what it takes it to actually to go it. beyond. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to be the difference. You know, you yeah. have to make the difference by determining to go beyond where they stopped. Yeah. In general, yeah. of course, uh, as you are saying, uh, this shows especially to the young people mm -hmm. that something better doesn't come easy. You yeah. have to be persistent mm. and you have to be resilient mm. because uh, the way some of us when they graduate from the university, the young people, yeah, they want to pop up yeah. to happen. Mm. But that doesn't happen that way. Mm. So what I did, uh, I told him is okay. I choose some few engineers from there. Mm -hmm. And I told them, I have money. Mm -hmm. I will pay you. Mm -hmm. So when you finish job at the Kenya Vehicle Manufacturing Industry at 4 p.m., mm -hmm. they, because they live at around 4.30, you pass through, I, I list a workshop near there in Vika, mm -hmm. so that when they leave the job, they can come and work on my prototype. And I guess at this point they were doing the body because you already, yeah. uh, you were getting the the EV, Yeah. Uh, what is it called, the, the, the pathway you're going to get from China. Yeah, so in fact that time, that time uh, they helped me, the engineer there helped me to do the proper specification. Because okay. you have to say the capacity of the motor yeah. you want, is yeah. this three kilowatt, is this mm. two kilowatt, mm. the capacity of battery that you want, mm -hmm. is it uh, a 24 volt or a 12 volt battery that will power. We have to do all those analysis. Mm. So they did help me to do mm. all those analysis. Mm. Then now the fabrication, do you use steel, do you use fiber? what do you use mm. for this particular mkokotel? Yeah.